Hanke brings his unique, keen-edged intellect to bear on the world that he creates with highly perceptive observations, such as in his short story, Florence, which appeared in A Day in the Life, an anthology of writing from the Lower East Side, 1940 to 1990. I take great pleasure in welcoming Herbert Honke. And Dorothy, I think, delivered it extremely well. Uh, I am really pleased to have Marty and his wife Barbara with me tonight. These are the two people that I really thoroughly enjoy reading with. And I think if you'll listen to the lines in his poetry, you will find that he speaks so clearly of the element of pulsation and life in the elements. You know, no, no other explanation but that, plus the poetic eye. And, you know, it'll be great. Now, I have a story here that I'd like to read. It's a little lengthy, I'm afraid. It's uh, about a man that I was associated with on 42nd Street as a result of having served a short sentence at Hearts Island in New York, part of the... New York City penitentiary system mm -hmm. uh, at, at the time, I don't know what they call it now, the rock, I guess, just the island, Rikers. Dollar, dollar. <coughs> well, it's all condensed now, I think. Yes. I don't know that Hearts Island is still used anymore, dormitories. Are. At any rate, uh, I was much, much younger then, and, uh, you know, a little different attitude <laughs> on life in general than I'm settled with at this point titled Ed Leary, and if it gets boring, please say so, you know? I hadn't been in New York long when I met Eddie. When I first arrived, I was stone broke, and like every young kid who hits New York broke, I went directly to 42nd Street. I hadn't known anything about 42nd Street, but the name. Nevertheless, there I went, in no time becoming hip to the hustling routine, getting by fairly easily, meeting all kinds of people, having experiences I'd never suspected possible. I soon became acquainted with many of the regular habitués. One night, getting disgustingly drunk with a kid who was going on his second year as a 42nd Street hustler, doing a little stealing on the side, taking me along on this particular occasion, showing me how to break into automobiles, stealing such items as suitcases, top coats, suits, or anything of value left in the car. And because we were drunk and hardly realizing what we were doing, we got caught. Each of us ending up serving six months on Rikers Island. This was my first prison experience, and although in many respects unpleasant, at the same time interesting. When we were released, we went right back to 42nd Street. At the corner of 8th Avenue and 42nd Street, there used to be a notorious bar where petty crooks, fags, hustlers, and people of every description hung out, known as the Bucket of Blood, although that wasn't the real name. Wait, uh, I'm sorry, the real name. Someone would say, man, I've got to cut out now. I'll pick you up later at the Bucket of Blood, and you knew where he meant. I guess every city has its bucket of blood because I have run into several of them all over the country. <laughs> the first night following my release, I went into the bucket of blood and met Eddie. I had been standing at the bar looking the crowd over and nursing a glass of beer. When from out of nowhere, he came over and spoke to me. He said, hi, would you like to have a drink with me? I answered, sure, why not? He told me to go ahead and order a shot of whiskey and to forget the beer. He said he'd been watching me for some time and figured I was probably broke and could use a couple of drinks. And the place was exceptionally crowded with people pushing and milling around the bar, the jukebox blasting some popular record. The whole room was filled with smoke, the overhead fluorescent light filtering through, giving the place an eerie quality. The shouting and talking deafened one mixed with the burying sounds of music. 
the general atmosphere was like a small slice of hell. Eddie said he had seen me before, asking me to guess where he had seen me. I named a few places around the square. Each time he shook his head, smiling. At last saying, was in jail, over on the island. I used to watch you in the mess hall at chow time. Your company went in ahead of mine. I noticed how you always kept yourself looking very sharp. Your hair always combed, just so. You stood out from the others around you. I tried to meet you, but somehow it never worked out. I figured you might hang around the square. Eddie's appearance was good looking in the sense he bore himself with quiet dignity, conservatively, with a suggestion of an inner turbulence threatening to come to the surface where he could relax, piqued my curiosity, giving me the impression of depth. His coloring, coloring was medium light, his facial features finely drawn, somewhat sharp and pointed, his eyes gray from within full of light, his mouth thin and well-shaped, his hair was wavy, streaked, silver gray, of which he was exceedingly conscious. He was about 28 at the time I'm speaking of, and first he was sure the hair made him appear old, then he was sure it was conspicuous, or it made him look effeminate. We stood talking at the bar a long time, getting a little drunk, telling each other about ourselves, our plans, our experiences, how we'd gotten into trouble, into jail. Finally, one or the other mentioned narcotics. He told me he'd first started using heroin or H while he was in the army in Panama. At that time, he used stuff for a period of about 18 months until he ran into some difficulty with a girl he was shacking up with who in a fit of jealousy, as I remember the story, reported him to the army authorities, causing him to be dishonorably discharged after being sent to the stockade, where he served almost three years. He returned to his beloved Brooklyn, staying off the stuff, getting a job as a, holiday, a trolley driver, until one night about two years after, before we met, he pulled into the car barn, stepped down off the car into the path of a car pulling into the barn, and was hit, receiving a broken leg. While convalescing, he became involved with a male nurse who could occasionally supply him with morphine, and he was soon hooked. I told him of my own experiences with junk in Chicago, of how along with a friend of mine I'd started picking up on heroin, finally getting mildly hooked, having to kick when my only source of supply had been arrested and sent to jail, I explained I was pretty green about the whole routine and that when it was necessary to kick, I went to my mother who had been very upset, but had sensibly helped me by taking me to her doctor who had given me a reduction cure. Incidentally, that's not quite true. <laughs> it didn't work that smoothly. I told him it had been an unpleasant experience, but I had actually not had too much trouble, and it had happened. This, at that, it had happened about three years ago. During our conversation, we both discovered that we were still interested in Jack, and that we both preferred it to drinking. I mentioned knowing a pot connection who might be around, although I hadn't seen him since getting out of the joint, that I liked smoking pot. We called it gauge or tea in those days, and perhaps if we looked around, we'd find him. Eddie said he didn't like smoking pot, and he didn't like cake. He felt it was, if one was going to smoke, it should be the pipe, opium. He did suggest, maybe, the guy would know where to score some age, asking me if I would like to shoot a little stuff. We had another drink at the bar, discussing what we would do if we did score. I told him as he had guessed that I was stone broke without even a place to sleep. I had come into the joint intending to try and pick up a queen, score for some loot and get a place to stay. But he said not to worry about that. If I wanted to, I could check into a hotel with him. He was planning to stay over in New York for a couple of days anyway. Besides, he liked me. This would give, me, give us an opportunity to get to know each other better. Also, he was anxious by now to get some stuff and get on. And I had taken an immediate liking to Eddie, and this plan suited me fine. Shortly after leaving the Bucket of Blood, along 8th Avenue, between 45th and 46th Street, 
We located you, the plot connection, and asked him to make a heroin score for us. As it happened, he had recently run into some fellow uptown while picking up his supply of pot, who had suggested he might run into some of his customers anxious to cop some stuff. We should get in touch with him. He could get him as much as he wanted. Stuff was being pushed in capsules at that time. We asked you to pick up two, I think. Eddie and I had decided to check into a small hotel at 51st Street and 8th Avenue where I stayed a few times before being arrested. I was sure we could get a room without difficulty. We arranged to meet you in the coffee shop on the same corner in an hour. Eddie and I continued up the avenue until we reached the hotel where we rented a room for a week. Eddie, having decided at the last minute, since he was holding fairly heavy financially, he might as well stake me to a room for a week. Also, it would give him a place to fall in should he return to the city sooner than he expected. While we were waiting for Hugh to get back, we cut down the street to a drugstore where I used to be able to, where I used to be able to buy anything short of the real McCoy, Benzedrine, Secondol, Nembutol, any of the barbiturates, high droppers and hypodermic needles. We bought two droppers and a couple of spikes, needles, number 26, half inch, and some wires for cleaning. We stopped in the automat for coffee, and before leaving, picked up two teaspoons. We had been doing a lot of talking, feeling each other out about our likes and dislikes, and as I learned more about Ed, the greater became my interest in him. Although I had met thieves and hustlers and knock-around characters of all kinds in the past couple of years, Eddie was the first I met who lived by his wits, impressing me as being competent and capable of carrying out plans. He was definitely intelligent and carried himself with what is generally termed in the vernacular of the underworld, class. There was a certain evilness about him which appealed to me, although much later I came to realize the evilness I saw in Eddie and this was true in Eddie's case particularly, with mostly projection on my part. Oddly enough, Eddie recognized this much sooner than I did, and allowing me to relax and to display what could be called voraciousness and lack of inhibitions with him I never attained before or since with anyone else. We met Hugh on time, and he asked to come along <coughs> with us. He said he had never tried stuff, and he wanted to. He'd heard so much about it, he wanted to find out if it was as great as everyone said. The three of us went up to the room and turned on. It didn't take much to get us high. Neither Eddie or me had been used for quite some time, and it was Hugh's first experience. We all three got really stoned and sat around talking and were simply going on the nod until the early hours of the morning, finally dropping off to sleep, awakening much later in the day. We all three felt fairly good, although somewhat sluggish. Hugh lit up a couple of sticks of pot before cutting out, leaving us feeling good and a bit hot. After Hugh left, Eddie and I split what was left of the stuff. Eddie was entirely, an entirely new type of person to me. I had never known anyone quite like him. Not for, nor for that matter have I since met anyone his equal in independence and scheming know-how. 